Pitching on stilts. <laughs> Everyone in the stands is involved in everything. We're not in the baseball business. We're in the entertainment business. I saw the pitcher twerking. We'll be traveling all over the country, from coast to coast. We break down the wall between player and fans. We're bringing the fun back into the game of baseball. Nationally and internationally recognized. What's more fun than the bananas in baseball? Fans want this faster type, exciting way of baseball. That's what ball game is all about. It's about having to be entertained. Genius concept. You've never seen the national pastime played quite like this. Banana is so great. There's a lot to this. Wait until you see them play. And it's proving to be the greatest show in sports. Bananas fans, thank you so much for your support. We love you guys. And Banana Nation, we'll see you soon. <laughs>matters the most, with every run counting as a point. Number two, there's a two hour time limit. When we hit the two hours, boom, it's over. Unless there's a tie, and then it goes to our one-on-one -on -one showdown. Pitcher versus hitter with only one fielder. The pitcher has to stop the hitter, or the hitter has to score. Number four, there's no bunting. Bunting sucks, we're eliminating it. All right, swing the bat. Next rule, you can steal first. If a pitcher throws a wild pitch, I don't care what count it is. All right, hit or take off. Number six, there are no walks. Walks are now sprints. On ball four, the hitter takes off to first. He can advance to as many bases as he wants, while the catcher has to throw the ball to every single position player before it becomes live. Number seven, batters cannot step out of the batter's box. You step out, it's a strike. Next rule, no mound visits. Coach does a slow little walk out to the mound. He's just delaying the game. Fans don't need that. We're done with that. And finally, what's the most fans first rule you could have? Well, let the fans actually play. If a fan catches a foul ball, it's an out. Everyone's 
trying to be a part of the game, now fans can be. And that's Banana Ball. Well, a magnificent rendition of the national anthem. Now you know the rules, and now you see the boys in yellow, kicking it like the Rockettes, a team that started as a collegiate baseball team in 2016. The game of banana ball first invented and tested in 2018, first played by the Bananas in 2020, won City World Tour in 2021, seven cities in 2022, and as I mentioned just a bit earlier, 33 cities across the continental United States here in 2023. The Nanners are filled with plenty of veterans, some from the college team, some from affiliated professional baseball, many from independent professional baseball. This is the most entertaining team in sports. The Bananas will be the home team tonight. Remember in Banana Ball, as you just learned, every inning counts as a point. Runs are important, but runs are just a means to the end of gaining points. So, the Bananas trying to hold the party animals scoreless. If they can do that, it will just take one run from the Nanners to win the first inning. Two hour time limit on our game. Whichever team scores the most points in two hours wins. There is Mr. Kyle Lewix, Cowboy Kyle, as he has been known around these parts in Banana Land. Rocking. Not a baseball cap, but just about the most beautiful, bedazzled cowboy cap that you've ever seen in your life. Now, Kyle, a four-year collegiate banana, one of only three in the seven-year history of the college iteration of this team. His catcher, Bill Leroy, who you just saw a split second ago. The One of the other two, Ryan Kennedy, a southpaw, the third man. Kyle, in his second year as a professional banana, led the 2022 World Tour in innings pitched with 23, tied with Christian Dearman, who will get the ball for the Nanners tomorrow night, and led the tour with his 22 Ks. He's a classic four-pitch mix guy. Fastball, changeup, slider, curve. Work a cutter in there, a little iteration of the slider as well. As Jesse Cole, the man in the yellow tux, makes his way out to the field. I get those goosebumps. Start the clock, we will, Jesse. Two hour time limit in Banana Ball starts right now. Kyle fired up to face a man that he has been on the bump against plenty of times now, Breland Almadova. The pride of Honolulu, Hawaii. Was on the wrong side of the fastest strikeout in Banana Ball history. Kyle got him in 10.2 seconds. That one catches the inside corner. Fans, first yellow banana ball is going to Cooperstown to the National Baseball Hall of Fame. How about that? You heard it from Jesse. The first official yellow banana ball is now a part of history, and it's on its way up to Cooperstown, New York, to the National Baseball Hall of Fame. The left fielder for the party animals quickly behind 0-2. There's no stepping out of the box in Banana Ball, so Breland at the mercy of Kyle Speed. The only amendment to that rule, as you just saw, is on foul balls. You can get out and take a breather. And Breland hanging tough, guy who spent four years in the Arizona Diamondbacks minor league system. He's played seven years of independent professional baseball since then. He's the leadoff hitter for 11 out of the 14 games of the 2022 Banana Ball World Tour. Breland deeks towards first because in Banana Ball you can steal first base. A little surprised that the man out of the University of, of Hawaii didn't take the gamble there and that's why. Right through the six hole and he's gonna celebrate. Flip of the bat and a leadoff single 
for the boys in pink. Breland can run, he's got good wheels. Although last year on the tour, only three for six in stolen base attempts. He's on for Dalton Cornett. The catcher tonight for the party animals, takes the heater high. Kyle about 90, 91 miles an hour with the fastball. Dalton, the pride of Pippa Passes, Kentucky out of Alice Lloyd College. Party animal on the tour last year. And just like the man on first, party animal for the summer series this past August, bleeding into September. That one chopped back up the middle, could be two. Ryan Cox on the bag, fire to first in time. The glove magician does what he does best. Schnazzy double play, 6-3. And the leadoff single eliminated just like that. Shifts were just banned in Major League Baseball. Got to have two guys on the infield grass on each side of second base. In banana ball, they're still kosher. You saw Ryan Cox playing right behind second base. What a wild pitch here <laughs> from Kyle Lewigs. It was also a moratorium on box when nobody is on base, so you can get as creative with your windup as you would like. A crow hop from behind the mound there on the fire home to Reese Hampton. He was a banana on the tour last year. He's traded in the yellow for the pink. This is gonna be a tough play. And the flip to first, not in time Oops, from the songbird of our generation, Dalton Malden at second base. So an infield single for Hampton. Reese, a truly terrific professional ball player out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Has spent the past two summers with the Gastonia Grizzlies and the Frontier in the Atlantic League, pardon me. Not known for running, only one stolen base. And a few games played this past summer, although 10 for 11 in, in 2021. And Kyle will check on him. His Grizzlies teammate, Jake Skull, the first baseman, a menacing man in the box. Hit one bomb on the tour last year, just like Reese over on first base. That was for the Bananas. Party animals are supercharged. A lot of talent has gone from the first base to the third base dugout. From last year's tours to this one. Bill Leroy will check on Hampton, who's back safely. And that one fouled, could be caught for an out by a fan, but it's gonna leave the entire premises. That's my favorite rule of banana ball. If a fan catches a foul ball on the fly, it's an out as Matt Malatesta sails the ball over Kyle's head. 2-2 two -two pitch with two down, Hampton off first, coming to the menacing Jake Skoll. Man who spent seven years in minor league baseball, five with the Texas Rangers organization, two with the New York Yankees. And a swing and a miss. Kyle got him on the heater. And we'll see what the celebration is. Looks like a little Euro step, and the whole team is gonna Euro right off the field. An impressive inning from Mr. Lewis. The Bananas could walk it off with just one run. We'll throw it down to our statistics savant of banana ball, Josh Talevsky. Very much, Pico. That's right. I'm here to talk about banana ball speed 101 classes in session. Now, speed, one of the big things that makes our game different from regular baseball. Observe figure one. Every game we play, two hours long. Now, the average pro game, three hours and two minutes. Another interesting number, we've had a three-pitch strikeout that was recorded in just 10 seconds. Now, in pro baseball, the average time between pitches is 20.5 seconds. Now, how are we able to cut down on this? Well, observe figure three, where batters cannot step out of the batter's box, and if they do, it's a strike. 
Also, no mound visits. We don't want the coaches coming out and disrupting the pace of play. Finally, fans can catch the foul balls for outs. And I'll tell you what, instead of 10 and 11 pitch at bat, then the catch of the foul ball eliminates all that and gets the innings moving a lot faster. That's all I've got for you on speed today, Vico. I'll throw it back up to you. Well, thank you very much, Josh. I was just saying to the big unit, Matt Adams hanging out in the booth with me, who will be on in the next half inning, that I forgot how fast Banana Ball is. We haven't seen a game since September 3rd, as you take a look at Garrett Delano, the dark side of Kyle Lewigs with the black cowboy hat on the mound as Eric Jones flies it straight to Reese Hampton on the first offering from Delano, one pitch, one out. Good for the old MPI, another key statistic here in Banana Ball. As the extra hitter is retired on the line out and now it'll be Dan Obers, the first baseman, a three year collegiate banana. Was the World Tour batting average leader, 440. Dan hit over the 14 games last spring. Had an excellent summer series with the Nanners to follow it up. Hitting 471 across the six game. Six nothing sweep, bananas over party animals. That one's chopped up the middle, it's destined for center field. Picking up right where he left off. No surprise there, one of the most valuable pieces on a 2021 Coastal Plain League championship bananas team. And he continues to rake into his professional career. Swipe 27 bags and 28 attempts in the summer of 2021. See if he tries to run with Danny Hosley at the dish, who is immediately plunked by the Delano heater. And Danny looks like he might need a little resuscitation. Jackson Olson, no, it's gonna be the doctor, David Meadows. <laughs> DR gets him going and the George Mason product able to beat it out to first. Safe call from Adam Virant over there. So the first pitch of Danny Hosley's Bananas career hits him square in the lower back. And the Nanners now have the walk-off run in scoring position for the Prince of Banana Land himself, Bill Leroy. As I said, when Kyle took the mound in warm-ups, Bill, one of three bananas to spend four years on the college team, just like his battery mate. He enters his second season as a pro. And he strokes it straight to third base. Bryson Bloomer over to Dustin Baber. And what looked like it could have been a walk-off ends up being a 5-4 double play. And no run scored, no points earned in the first inning tonight. We'll toss it down to Jesse Cole for a brand new promotion. The first time this one's been done, it's time for Pick Your Parent. Here's Jesse. Two parents right here, and they're swinging out here. He's having the time of his life. If only he knows the decision he's about to make is a very serious decision. So this promotion is called Pick the Parents. In five seconds, both parents are gonna walk away 10 feet. And we're gonna see which way Wyatt goes. Does he go to his dad or does he go to his mom? And whoever he goes to, the other one gets pied in the face. All right, parents separate from Wyatt Go. Wyatt likes it. Oh, <laughs> oh he's going wrong. Oh, wait, wait. Oh. He's going past the ball. All right, let's pick up Wyatt here. Dad, I'm sorry. That was the fastest decision I've ever made. All right, Mom. Wyatt, we know who your favorite is. Mom, let's give Dad a big pie right here. There we go. You want to come play? This is because of you right here. You ready? Go. Right, here we go. Ready? On the mark, get set, go! Oh! And all over the baseline, which is scary. All right, let's 
here for Wyatt picking his mom. Quick decision there from Wyatt as his mom wins the brand new promotion before it barely even starts. And I am honored to be joined by the big unit, Matt Adams, here in the broadcast booth, a man who played against the Bananas in the Challenger Series for the Kansas City Monarchs last year. Matt, thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Can you put it into perspective what it was like playing against the Nanners in this young sport of banana ball as we have a first pitch fly out and David Meadows makes a backflip catch <laughs> in center field. The game flies by you if you look away for a second. I mean, it's just seeing these guys out here doing their thing, bringing the, the joy and, and happiness back into the game of baseball and, and being able to, you know, witness it firsthand playing against uh, you guys last year. It was a sight to see. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm so blessed and, and grateful that I was able to be a part of that uh, Challenger Series in, in KC. And, I uh, had a blast and, and happy to be back down here in West Palm uh, uh, checking out the guys doing their thing. A quick 0-2 count now on Tanner Thomas. It was Bryson Bloomer who had snagged the liner from Bill Leroy, turning in a 5-3 double play to end last inning that made the line out to center field. Now it's the right fielder, a returning party animal. He was a 2018 and 2019 collegiate banana at the dish against his former teammate. That one chopped to third and Jackson Olsen Makes quick work. And Matt, I, I think it was really key. Uh, you know, you're an 11 year major league vet. The career is not over. You're actually at spring training here with the Nationals, about to be playing in the ballpark of the Palm Beaches for the Nats. Uh, a World Series champion, of course, in 2019 with uh, the boys from DC. Uh, the way that you bought in and were so excited about what the Bananas were doing, I can't tell you how, uh, how happy all these guys were and, and just what that meant. I felt like, you know, you were the biggest domino, the big unit to fall. All of a sudden, your teammates seemed to be completely bought in, too. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, when you guys approached me to do the weigh-in, uh, those two two games, <laughs> yeah. uh, I was I was thrilled. It was, I saw what you guys were doing on uh, TikTok and, and social media, and I, I definitely wanted to be a part of it. So uh, you just got to buy into, into stuff like this. I mean, like I said, like it's bringing the joy and the happiness back into the game for the fans. I mean, look at this place. This place is sold out. Uh, it's just amazing, and uh, it, it's it's great to be out here tonight, uh, seeing all this stuff go down, and uh, you know for you guys to get the world tour started. Joe Lytle at the dish, a quick two-two count, as he spoils that offering. The DH for the party animals. You get a DH and an EH in banana ball because we bat ten, kind of lets us get some of, some of our more creative characters into the lineup. Uh, Joe, a guy you actually played against for the Florence Yalls last year in the American Association as Kyle tries about a 100-foot pitch and just misses high. <laughs> now, full count offering coming in. I'm telling you, if you blink, you'll miss the whole game. Ooh. That one is popped in the infield. We'll see if someone has a trick for us. Dan Oberst makes the call and makes a calm catch. And Kyle with a 1-2-3, top of the second inning. Still scoreless here in the ballpark of the Palm Beaches. Love seeing those two do, do their thing out there, and uh, this is just amazing. I, I, I feel like every time here, uh, it always, always shows up uh, with a smile on my face, watching these guys have fun and uh, playing the game of baseball. Yeah, and that, that looked like uh, a little lift from the, uh, the five foot eight catcher lifting the six foot four pitcher. <laughs> You would think it might be reversed, but I, I think a lot of things you see in Banana Land, you think uh, it, it's not something that uh, you would see on a baseball field. No, but, uh, you know, you guys are doing it, it right, and, uh, you know, I can't say it enough. It's just it's great for the sport, great for the game, and, uh, you know, obviously the fans are enjoying what you guys are doing, and uh, look forward to seeing uh, where the future goes for Banana Ball. You're taking a look at Jake Skull warming up before there. As I mentioned, he's a seven-year uh, affiliated baseball vet and as most superhumans do when he was done with minor league baseball he decided he would play three years of SEC football at the University of Georgia now you take a look <laughs> at Bryson Bloomer a two-year Savannah Banana two-time Coastal Plain League champion and he's just beginning his professional career although he's traded the yellow for the pink and and uh, you know as as a guy who's played at the the top level of baseball and and got to hit off of Kyle Lewick's 
you can you can attest these are some uh, serious professional ball players on the field. Yeah, I mean, like to to be able to do what Kyle does on the mound uh, in this environment, he's got great stuff. I mean, I, I think I he struck me out twice. So I wasn't gonna uh, mention it. <laughs> But uh, no, it's, it's just fun. Like, I was standing in the batter's box. Those few bats off him, just be, I was smiling back and forth at each other. And, uh, you know, being able to develop some of these relationships that I've, I did back uh, last summer and being able to see these guys down here uh, today back on the backfields getting their work in. And then tonight uh, for the real thing, it's, it's a sight to see. And uh, anybody that has a chance to come out and check banana ball out, you definitely need to. Garrett Delano back out on the bump. A quick one-two count on the TikTok superstar, Jackson Olsen. Delano got him with that nasty bender on the first offering. That's the curveball in the high 70s. His fastball, he'll throw a four-seam and two-seam, 90 to 94. And he'll mix a changeup in there as well, around 80. Olsen joined the Bananas for the summer series this past August. And cuts and misses on the heater. That's a tough pitch. That was one of the offerings that Kyle got you on last summer. Those high fastballs right at the top of the zone. Those yeah, are tricky. And, and I'll tell you, Garrett got it, got me on that a few times last season as well. Got to got to face him when he was in Lincoln, and uh, yeah, I mean these guys can still play. They they can still play at a high level, and uh, but also have fun with it as well. So it's it's really really cool to see that go down. Yeah, Delano spent the last two summers with the Salt Dogs in the American Association. Is there's a fastball poured in there to David Meadows, the center fielder. Got a Coastal Plain League championship with the Bananas this past summer. Started his pro career in the summer series. So far with one of the most fantastic plays we've seen in banana ball history, the backflip catch. Yeah, I, I really don't know how he does that with the out there in center field. The, the, the timing of that has to be 100% perfect. and. Uh, to be able to see that in person, that was that was pretty special. We're going to be seeing some backflip snags from you in Nats Park this summer. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I go to quite that far. That, that might be an injury waiting to happen. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to keep both feet on the dirt when I'm trying to catch the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Quick 0-2 pitch coming here to the doctor, and another K for Delano. The high stinky cheese. <laughs> I don't know what happened to his catcher, <laughs> Joe Lytle. Looks like. He's uh, something. He got tied up there. <laughs> I don't know if he was hit by some kind of uh, a projectile. Seems like Delano hunted him down. Couple quick strikeouts <laughs> here in the bottom of the second. Remember in banana ball, if you win an inning, you get a point. That's the whole key to the game here. It's match style play. So if the bananas can get a run here in the bottom of the second, they'll win the second inning and break a scoreless tie. As Noah Bridges, the left fielder, pride of Benson, North Carolina, just like the two men who preceded him, started his Bananas career in the summer series. And that looked like the changeup. Yeah, change oh, up goodness right gravy. Biting away from a lefty. That was, yeah, that's a, that's a tough pitch to make contact with right there. Garrett Delano alive. trying to strike out the side. Went with the heater. Noah Bridges just about as fast as they come. But of course, bunting banned in banana ball. Takes away one of his big weapons. Very capable swing in the bat. Doesn't pull the trigger there. Garrett Delano strikes out the side. And some spin kicks from Joe Lytle to celebrate. Matt Adams, I can't thank you enough for joining me in the booth, man. This was a blast. Pico, thanks for having me. And I uh, look forward to, you know, watching you guys this summer. And, uh, you know, best of luck in the future. Hey, good luck in spring training. Thank big you, unit. I appreciate that. There goes Matt Adams exiting stage left. He has got an early morning coming on tomorrow, training to rejoin.
of a boogie from the Bananas and Party Animals teaming up to break it down to some Michael Jackson. And as we head to the top of the third inning, Kyle Lewick's back out on the bump. It's gonna be eight, nine, 10 in the Party Animals lineup. Acuff, Swan, and Baber due to swing it. And Chase Acuff, not wasting any time. The shortstop lines that one into left center, digging for two, the throw from Noah Bridges offline. And the 2021 Collegiate Banana starts off the tour with a screaming double into the left center field gap. And while Jason Swan gets up to the dish, I get to welcome one of the true legends of our nation's pastime, Tim Kirchin, into the broadcast booth. How are you doing, Tim? Uh, I'm great. This is my first Bananas game. And I must say, this is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> And I love it. This is entertaining. The people are having a blast. I watched the first two innings from the stands. We're trying to get people interested in baseball, give them a good night on a Friday. These people are having a tremendous time that I was around. And now we've got the pitcher, middle infielders, and center fielder all doing a choreographed dance that leads into a, looks like an 89 mile an hour heater fouled off. Well, this is the whole point. Uh, both pitchers have thrown in the 90s, one at 94. None of this works. The circus, the carnival doesn't work if these guys can't play, and clearly they can. Yeah, that's been the key, is this is the third year that we have broke out a Banana Ball World Tour, it is continuing to improve the skill of the players. Well, I was so impressed talking to so many of them before the game, where they played before, and again, it's critical. When you're a Division I college player at a big-time program, and now you're playing here, you know you've played a lot of baseball in your life, and that's really important. Kyle Lewis gets his second K of the day as Swan couldn't check his swing. Jackson Olsen retires Dustin Baber, an assist from his first baseman. Dan Oberst applies the tag, and two outs as Chase Acuff advances over to third base. We now go to the top of the order. Breland Almodova singling to left his first time. We'll try and bring in the first run of the game. Acuff 90 feet away. Now, you uh, started truly covering Major League Baseball in 1979. You are uh, one of the greatest historians that we have here. Did you ever imagine seeing this on a baseball diamond? I never thought I'd see two starting pitchers wearing a cowboy hat in the same game. <laughs> But that's what we've seen. And I saw a guy before the game who had a Spaceman helmet on, and he's going to wear it in the game. Yeah, a little Daft Punk type thing going on there. We, we still don't know who he is. We just know his name's DJ, <laughs> uh, and he can throw the heck out of the ball. Uh, you also got to see the legend Bill Lee, who you covered in uh, the beginning of your career. Did you ever think you would see him out here pitching at the age of 76 years old professionally? Actually, I did, because <laughs> he is a lunatic. He is the spaceman. He was carrying around a big rock with him and just <laughs> rotating it in his left hand. I said, what are you doing? He goes, this is how I get ready to pitch at age 76. Yeah, it was, uh, he was really excited about it. It was a sedimentary rock. It, it had a whole lot of stuff going on in it. Well, I'm fascinated to see his velocity. Yes. But apparently he can throw 76 miles an hour. Tell me how many other people in the world can throw their age at that age. Right. He threw 78 in Kansas City this past spring as Kyle gets his third K of the day. That one looking on Breland Almodova. And boy, we are strapped in and ready to rumble. I only had you for a half inning. Can I keep you for another half? Well, it only lasted 45 <laughs> seconds. That's the point about these games. They really move, which is good. OK, we've got a husband calling contest. We want to see how they can call him. And then we'll be back with Tim Kirchner in the booth.
so we had it looked like a kiss off. Tim is currently being interviewed by ESPN uh, over to our left here for a doc that I'm sure will come out within the next year. Uh, you've got three different people acti asking you questions here, Tim. How do you keep it straight, man? <laughs> okay, here we are, bottom of the third inning, as it's going to be 8 9 10. Michael Deeb in the box, Garrett Delano back out on the bump after striking out the side. And he bounces that one straight back where it came from. It's going to be an infield single as Dustin Baber knocks it down. And the Bananas have the inning winning run on base. Uh, so, Tim, what do you think about, you know, banana ball and nine different rules about the fact that every inning is its own game within itself? Well, I, I would not agree we should do this in the big leagues, but it, <laughs> it sure is an interesting concept. You know, in the NBA All-Star Game, I believe they've done that. If you win a quarter, you get extra points. They're doing that in the NBA. What's the difference here? Dalton Malden shoots that one down the right field line. It's going to be trouble. Malachi Mitchell rounding third. The relay throw. Not in time. Dalton Malden walk off double. The Bananas win the third inning and take a one to nothing lead. So they won the inning without even getting it out. That, that's it? I have to go now? <laughs> that's it. You can stay as long as you want, Tim. But that is the madness of Banana Ball. Well, this is the beauty of what they're trying to do here. You have to watch every play because the rules will change. I've never seen anybody score in the third inning of a game, and all of a sudden the inning's over. I love this. It's great. It's a great idea. Oh, man, it is good fun. The, the thought there was the most exciting play in baseball is the walk-off, so why not have as many as you can right. in one game? In, in theory, you could have seven, eight, nine walk-offs <laughs> right. in one game. That's a bit bizarre, but I love it. Uh, Tim, thank you so much for joining me in the booth. I know that you've got all kinds of media obligations tonight. It's been an absolute honor. Well, it's been an unforgettable night in a lot of ways, and thanks for having me. Syracuse guy. Anyone who went to Syracuse is good with me. That's right. Shout out. Uh, Jeff, Tim's son, who is, uh, you know, one of my good buddies that is able to get Pops into the booth. There we go. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, thank you, Tim. Hopefully we'll see Tim further along on the Banana Ball World Tour. We'll throw it down to our statistical savant, Josh Jalewski, for another report from the field. Thank you very much, Biko. We're here for lesson number two, and it's about minutes per inning, MPI, one of the most important stats in Banana Ball. And here's my thesis statement. The better MPI a pitcher has, the better he is overall. And I can tell you why. Because if you're able to have a very low MPI, your team is getting off the field quicker with clean innings, and you're able to score more and hopefully your team's going to win those games. So let's look at the evolution of MPI. 2022 World Tour, Luke Kelly with the record, 1 minute and 45 seconds. Kyle Lewigs and Bill Lee, both 10 seconds behind Luke. And now the official game record was set in the Summer Series with Jared Donaldson, 1 minute and 29 seconds. Kyle Lewigs finished a minute 43 and Matt Wolf with 205. But here is the kicker. Our guys are getting better. Brett Helton, 107 in a scrimmage in 2023. Matt Malatesta at 109. Brandon Sherman, 112. These guys were within six seconds of each other. We might see a record tonight from somebody, so stay tuned to see if there's a new MPI record. Biko, back up to you, big guy. Tim Kirchin exits. Josh Chalevsky takes over, giving us the nitty gritty on minutes per inning, which as you can see, if you've been keeping track tonight, we're 34 minutes into the ball game. We have three innings already under the books and we are rolling at a meteoric pace into the fourth. Kyle Lewigs, Cowboy Kyle back out on the bump. He's been fantastic so far. He's scattered three hits across three scoreless frames. Wins the third inning, thanks to Michael Deeb, then pinch run for by Malachi Mitchell, and then Dalton Malden, the songbird of our generation with the inning walk-off as Vincent Chapman calls time to dust off the plate. And now add a little extra spice to it. The world's greatest dancing umpire, shaking what his mama gave him and doing it like only he can. To quote King Julian from the 2005 animated film Madagascar, Vincent can really move it, move it.
Goodness gravy. That guy could boogies. I'm joined by another guest, an uninvited guest, although I'm not unhappy that you are here. The third uh, man or object or uh, fruit to join us in the broadcast booth tonight, Split, the Bananas mascot, getting real close and personal with our broadcast booth camera. It's 2-3-4 in the Party Animals lineup here in the top of the fourth inning. Big cut and a miss from DC3, Dalton Cornett. Grounded into a 6-3 double play his first time. And the catcher for the party animals. Quickly with two strikes on him. Take a look at the stats he had on last year's World Tour. He swung the heck out of it with the 370 batting average. Now a full count, three balls and two strikes. We haven't seen a sprint yet tonight. And we still will not. That wall is driven into the left center field gap. It is big time trouble. Dalton digging for two. And he's going to slam the brakes with a stand up double as Ryan Cox tries to pick him off. Dan Oberst taking over the second base duties. <laughs> Split continues his antics up here in the booth. That's why Dalton Cornett is in the two hole. That guy can swing it, the son of Scott Cornett, former Chicago White Sox, the mayor of Dalton's hometown, Pippa Passes. Thank you, buddy. That's really, that's really adding to our show here. <laughs> Stop. Oh, boy. Dalton's dad also, vice president of the school, the baseball coach, his 34th year doing that. His third year now is the basketball coach. He's the dean of students. What else? Do you want from Mr. Cornett? And that one gets the bottom of the zone as Reese Hampton, a single his first time up, grounder up the middle that Dalton Malden grabbed but never had a chance to get the speedy center fielder over at first base. Party Animals still looking for their first run of the night as Hampton turns on that, deep after it. And he's going to be called off by his center fielder. DR makes an off-balance snag. Hampton wanted Dalton Cornett to do the two-base tag, but he's going to play it safe and stay at third base with just one down now. So Hampton won for two. Jake Skoll, the first strikeout victim of the evening for Kyle Lewigs, went down swinging. With a chance for a productive out to give the party animals their first run of the evening. Of course, that doesn't guarantee any points. You have to win an inning to get a point. But it'd be a step in the right direction for the fellas in pink. Kyle back from the back to the windup with Cornette now at third. Great stop by Mr. Lewigs now. Six year battery mate Bill Leroy. Also six straight years of living together. There's that nasty slider from Kyle. 2-2 Two -two coming to the Party Animals first baseman. He goes back to the well and the count is full. Remember ball four would initiate a sprint. It would easily score Cornett from third because all seven fielders behind the pitcher and catcher would have to touch the ball before it's live. Fastball is going to be chopped to second. It's going to get the job done. Dalton knocks it down. Throw to first. Just in time. Boy, Jake Skoll and Sam Claycamp, the first base coach, are apoplectic. But instead of an infield single and an RBI, it'll be a ground out to second. And a stake nonetheless as Cornette scores the first run of the world tour for the party animals. Now Bryson Bloomer, first pitch he saw, he rocketed to center field. And David Meadows made the backflip catch. Our only true trick play of the night thus far. We'll be tracking that a lot more. As this world tour continues, that one off the mitt of Leroy, but his former Coastal Plain League banana teammate Bryson Bloomer ready to swing the bat. 
Yeah, he's telling Kyle on the mound that he's here to swing the lumber. And that one's right back up the middle. The slider is sent straight towards Mr. Lewigs. And the boomer, that one for two on the evening, a two out single. Tanner Thomas, ground out victim to the TikTok superstar Jackson Olsen over at third base his first time. Tinder Thomas, as they call him. You look at the numbers from last year's world tour. Was fantastic. Fourth highest batting average from either team. And a healthy cut. He's got pop too. And a monster home run in Riverwalk Stadium in Montgomery, Alabama. Bananas shift him to pole. Dalton Malden playing in shallow right. Left side of the infield, shifting over a bit as well as Leroy tries a back pick. Bloomer just safe, diving back to first base. Tanner Thomas, two years at Texas, at Tallahassee Community College. And then three years at Virginia Tech as Kyle starts a clap, 0-2 count, his teammates joining in. Now the full capacity crowd is clapping. And wait a minute. With the crowd getting into it, Kyle dunking the baseball into something behind the mound. What's Jackson Olsen doing? Nothing. <laughs> That's a pitch high. Looks like a stunt was attempted, but not completed. And Kyle's going to go back after the party animal's right fielder. That one low, check swing. Bryson Bloomer steals second base, first steal for either side on the tour. Animals already with one run this inning. That one stroked into right. Bryson Bloomer waved around third. Deeb's throw home is going to be cut off. And now Thomas heading towards second. Barehanded throw in time. Heck of a play by Bill Leroy to end the inning. But the party animals strike for two runs. And now the bananas will need two to avoid the party animals tying the game. Nanners will need three to win the inning. Goodness gravy. As we head to the bottom of the fourth inning here in Banana Land. Time to take a look at both of our chats. The YouTube chat's been going crazy. All of our good friends, our ultimate fans in the Bananas K Club has been popping off as well. Kristen wondering if it's by design that the party animals uniforms are a little bit tighter. Uh, that's a really good question. I think we'll have to ask our merchandise team here. A lot of confusion about what Kyle and Jackson Olsen tried at the end of that inning. Jason wondering if it's a little science exhibit. That certainly could be the case. Just trying a little experiment out there. Sandra says she's okay with the tightness of the party animals jerseys. Ah, uh, Caprice, you may be onto something, but I won't say that out loud. Although Todd, I, I think, and Jason, yeah, you've, you've all figured it out. Jeff, you are on the case as well. Caprice says somewhere Caitlin Scott is ticked off. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more, Caitlin was fired up for that one as well. Yeah, Kristen, invisible flames. That, that, sounds, that sounds about right. Steve, I love that new banana ball rule. The pitcher has to play.
Jacob wants us to give Josh a sports science show on ESPN. Yeah, I think it's worthy of it. That feels right to me, Jason. As we head to the bottom of the fourth inning, the Bananas lead the game one point to nothing, but trail the fourth inning two runs to nothing. So the Nanners will have to score two runs to tie it and keep their lead in points. Three runs to win the inning. It's the bottom of the order, 10, then one and two. Ryan Cox is first at bat of the tour. The returning banana from last year's tour flies that one to center and one pitch, one out. As Reese Hampton grabs it. And Christian Deerman joins me in the booth. Mr. Deerman, how you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing great. And hello, ladies and gents out there. I hope you are absolutely enjoying this absolute electric factory right now. Yeah. We got backflips, we got entertainment, we got almost a fireball, but <laughs> we got a whole bunch of fun going on and I'm so happy you guys are here watching it. Yeah, listen, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Exactly. Wayne Gretzky said that and then Michael Jordan was, Michael Jordan, uh, Michael Scott was made famous for it. I think Michael Jordan also said it, maybe yep. Kobe Bryant. I think so. Well, it's just. I think uh, it's a popular quote. We I, all gotta say it every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> Just attribute it to anybody who's uh, done anything interesting in the sports world. Now, Mr. Deerman, uh, I, I'm not sure I'm really truly breaking any news here. You will be tomorrow's starting pitcher. Yes, sir, I will be. And, and it's going to be electric. <laughs> that's a fact. And, of course, for anybody who does not know, this is Mr. Electric in the booth with me is Eric Jones, lined out to center his first time, the extra hitter for the Bananas with a 2-2 count on him. Jonesy looks good, man. He's, he looks like he's ready to smash a baseball right now. What do you think, Pico? Uh, I think he looks fantastic. Uh, he has been destroying balls in batting practice uh -huh. these past few weeks. He really has been. Scares me sometimes he's my catcher. Yeah, I, I hear you there. The Davidson product was one of the Seattle Mariners bullpen catchers last year, and he joined the team right around, right around when their big win streak started. Got to take a trip to the playoffs. Wow. Behind wow. the back snag, Tanner Thomas. My goodness, that man. Look at that man go. Oh, pretty in pink right there. All right, that is two fantastic trick plays, one for each side. DR for the Bananas, Mr. Thomas for the Party Animals. Slap a star next to that one in your scorebook at home. And now Dan Oberst, one for one with a single. Ended up being doubled off back in the first inning on the liner to Bryson Bloomer at third. And that one's chopped to first. Skull will take it himself. And an awful quick inning for Garrett Delano, although it was extended there by about five seconds. Well, And there goes the party animal celebrating right in front of those banana fans' faces. Classic animal move. <laughs> Man, don't worry, fans. We'll get them. <laughs> oh my goodness, a shower going on for the party animals. They win their first inning of the night. They win the fourth inning two to nothing and tie the game at one point apiece. Just to reiterate for everybody, you win an inning, you get a point. You could win an inning at seven to nothing, you yep. get one point. Yep. Really benefits the whole game, the fast paceness of the game, you know. But at the end of the game, when we got our last inning, remember that every run counts. So no matter what the score is in the end, it could be crazy. It's a very good point, Deerman. All right, let's let's toss it down to the field because we have a husband calling contest, and I've got to listen. That sounds about right. I think the ladies can relate. All right, Kelly, what is your husband's name? Joe. Where's Joe? Let's find out. Call for Joe. Well, be Sherry, everybody. Sherry, what's your husband's name? Shelly. Shelly. All right. Call Shelly. Where's Shelly at? Bless 
so Shelly is the winner. Uh, Sheldon, the husband. Shelly and Sheldon, what a dynamic duo there, huh? Dynamic, absolutely. <laughs> now we They're definitely soulmate. Whoa, what is this happening right now? Yeah, we've got a wheelbarrow up to oh the plate. Oh my goodness. How about that? A front flip for Mr. Lytle, assisted by Brett Hel Helton there. I didn't even know that was physically possible. <laughs> Have you seen them doing that in practice at all? I mean, that was... I mean, no. I didn't even know Joe could move like that. That's amazing. Yeah, Joe the DH. Although, he'll be doing a lot of catching over the rest of this world tour. Kyle Lewig's back out on the bump. And that one shot oh, into wow. left field. Lytle with a big round of first. He's, He's digging for two. And what we got here... Boom, oh. baby. What a throw from Noah Bridges in left. Lytle gunned down. That was mm -hmm. a nice impromptu slide. I honestly thought he almost avoided the high tag from Dalton Malden. Man, I know Dalton, if he would have missed that tag, he would have made a sad song right there. <laughs> we heard a sad song from Dalton on um, the pregame. Miss You, Love You, the new single. Yeah. You know, sometimes I think it's about me. You know, we used to be roommates, I had to move out. You know, I needed my own bathroom. Yeah, so Tanner Thomas, uh, the three of you were roommates. Yes, we were. And now it's house is, divided. Yeah. Now it's really divided. It's just the duo. <laughs> Chase Acuff takes over, one for one with a double, ended up wow. stranded on third base. And quick work of them. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. That had to be the fastest strikeout of the night, right? That's the fastest strikeout of the night as far as I'm concerned. The fourth K for Mr. Lewis who holds the fastest strikeout in banana ball history, 10.2 seconds. Breland Almodova was on the wrong side of that one. <laughs> now Jason Swan at the dish, the extra hitter. So in this inning, you get the designated hitter oh, and the extra jumping hitter. Jumping back and forth in the boxes too. Yeah, Swan showing the switch hitting capabilities. You can't leave the batter's box in banana ball, but you can go from one side to yep. the other. Jason, the five-year man out of Georgia Southern, started Big his... Pack at that one. Yeah, that was a nasty slider. Started uh -huh. his banana ball career in the summer series. Was a banana. He's now switched side to the party animals as Kyle is going to start the clap again. Yep. Here we go. Jackson Olsen joining him at the mound. Let's see what that cowboy's got for us. He's dunked the ball. Jackson Olsen with the light, and the ball's on fire! Oh my goodness! Oh, and just misses the outside. outside corner! Oh, oh man! man. <laughs> I could tell you that Rick Vaughn would not be happy with that call. Jackson lit the ball on fire in Kyle's hand. Kyle now has to apply some dirt to... Get all that stuff off. Yeah, I'd say ease. <laughs> He's the pain of whatever just happened to him, and Woo. it's gonna it's gonna be a one, two, three, two strikeout inning. He doesn't get a K on the fireball, but he does it on the next pitch. And he does an amazing cartwheel to add at it. Wow, that cowboy's impressive. Fifth K of the night for Kyle. Let's take a look at the fireball one more time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he that wanted was, the call. That was so cool. That's so cool. Unbelievable. Hey, if at first you fail, try, try, try again. Try, try again. Now, will you be lighting a ball on fire tomorrow night now, Dearman? See, I would love to, but, you know, that's not kind of my thing. I would like for it to be like a thunderbolt, you know? If I could throw a thunderbolt, that would be awesome. <laughs> okay, so if we can somehow get an electrocuted ball. Yes, yes. Maybe one strikes from the heavens or from up above, hits my hand, and then I throw it in. Maybe I'll finally hit 90. Oh, I bet you will. Oh, I yeah. bet that's all you need. <laughs> now, you've, you've done this plenty of times in your life. The fellow's bringing yellow roses out to fans in the stand. What, what's that experience like for you? Oh, man, it's just the most heartwarming thing in the world. Seeing a little girl's face light up when you bring that yellow rose to her. First of all, it's a yellow rose, so no one expects that. And just seeing them light up, the big smiles that they get, it makes it all worthwhile. 
Folks in the K Club chat fired up about the fireball. Oh, yeah. And uh, a lot of comments about Jason Swan switching from uh, one side of the batter's box to the other. Saw a little uh, Dalton Malden sign in the stands, and I love you Dalton sign. You see that? Oh. I didn't see that, but I need to go get it. Yeah, we need some. Uh, we need, we need uh, Dalton to go take a picture with that sign. We need some I love you, Mr. Electric signs. <laughs> Oh, man, you're too kind to me, Biko. Listen, I'll, I'll make one and, and hand one out to a fan, and you'll be none the wiser. <laughs> Danny Hosley leading off the bottom of the fifth inning for the Nanners. We are tied at one point apiece. Whoa. Yeah, check swing, foul ball, nearly takes out the ESPN camera crew. Those are some quick cat-like reflexes right there to get out of the way of the ball. Yeah, they're now exiting stage uh, right into the first base dugout. Oh. Bouncer to third. Real. Bloomer between the legs. Cross the diamond. Smooth okay. as silk. That was smooth, I will admit. It was a little bit of smooth criminal over there, but oh, he's still an animal. Osley plunked the first time up. Now 0 for 1. Uh, of course, you got uh -huh. to win a Coastal Plain League championship with Bryson Bloomer when yes, he, uh, he got just about as hot as any hitter I've seen in my entire life. I have never seen a man punish more baseballs in one series than Bryson Bloomer did for our championship series. It was unbelievable. Guy had two home runs championship game. My goodness. Sealed the deal. Ended up with seven homers on the summer. Led the team. And his last home run made it 13 to three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that did the job for you guys. One of the best days ever. Now, Mr. who has come to Banana Land a few times and absolutely shredded the gnar on the guitar is Bill. Uh, I gotta say, that's a nasty breaking ball coming out of Delano's hand right now. Couple of the ugliest swings I've seen from Bill's six year Bananas career. But the important part is he spoiled the yep, pitches. Exactly. Oh, was that a little pause? I'm not oh. gonna spoil that. I think that was a righty on righty changeup. That was, that ball looked like it stopped midair. My goodness. Bit down and in, fourth strikeout of the evening for Delano. This pitching matchup today is amazing. We got Kyle Louise in the gold cowboy hat and Delano in the black one. That's, this was banana ball, ladies and gents. It's, it's honestly a matchup made for pay-per-view, mm -hmm. but we're much happier given the broadcast out for free to the world. Oh yeah. It's the opener of the Banana Ball World Tour. We're tied at one point apiece. Tick-tock sensation, Jackson Olsen at the dish. Third baseman was the first strikeout victim for Garrett Delano this evening. Messing with timing a little bit, gets the outside corner, count two balls and a strike. Ooh. That was, that was one slippery lizard out of the one <laughs> hand right there. <laughs> that was a tight slider diving down and in. Yeah, but the Ocho's got this. Watch this. All right, see, firing off. It's my boy. It's like a little bit of a cutter from Garrett. Something like that. It's interesting because it's not a pitch he advertised to me. It's more curve, slider, change up, four seam, two seam. Looks like he may have added another arrow into the proverbial qu quiver this offseason. Payoff pitch coming to Olsen. Oh, we'll good fight going on from the greatest showman right now. Really making Delano work out there. Jackson, the four-year man at Hartford, finished up at Stetson. Ooh. And cuts and misses. Garrett goes right after him, picks up his fifth K of the night, and has a one, two, three inning. 
And it's still tied at one point apiece. Let's turn it down to Jesse Cole. Red Sox Hall of Famer, World Series pitcher, 76 years young. Please welcome now Bananas legend, Bill the Spaceman. Well, this is a special moment right here. At 76 years young, our beloved Bill Lee is returning to the mound for the first time since his collapse in Grayson Stadium in the bullpen last August. Very emotional moment when it happened, but you know the Graceland, Banana Land, Grayson Stadium brought our man back, and he's here, and he's ready to throw some gas his way. Stretching as only the Red Sox Hall of Famer can. I, as you just mentioned, it's, it's really another opportunity to thank the first responders from Thunderbolt. Yes. And Bill's true first responder is bullpen catcher Matt Wolf, yep. a paramedic and firefighter from Oklahoma City, who got to him. Oh, looks like Bill had a little bit of popcorn right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the old slippery glove is. <laughs> The song that was written about the man on the mound blasts through the ballpark of the Palm Beaches. Man, you can feel the power of the moment. Whoa, talk wow. about an EFIS. We are truly blessed to have the 507th pick of the 1968 Major League Baseball Draft. 14 year MLB vet, all star in 1973. He pitched games two and seven of the 1975 World Series. As I mentioned, a Red Sox Hall of Famer and a guy who probably deserves more than anyone on this planet to be introduced as the man, the myth, the legend. Ooh. Bill the Spaceman Lee. Locked and ready to go. Let's go, Spaceman. Show us what you got. Back under the brightest lights that Banana Land has to offer. Dustin Baber coming up to the box, looking like he's ready for a pot of gold. <laughs> That's a fact. But we are not gonna let that happen right now, right, Bill? Oh, yeah. That was a beautiful bender. Started about 13 feet in the air, ended up right down Broadway. Ooh. Man, that thing can touch a side, uh, satellite. <laughs> Baber, the second baseman, grounded out to third his first time. This one bounced to short. Ryan Cox between the legs. Nice. Picks up the one hopper that, that he created uh -huh. himself. And this is what Bill Lee does. Three pitches, one out. Efficient. Efficient work right there. All strikes, man. Pitches to contact. Had the third quickest inning last year's yeah. World Tour. A minute and 55 seconds. Absolutely amazing. You know, he told me the secret. You gotta throw the best pitch in the game, and that's a strike. Now to the top of the order we go. Breland Almodova, the left fielder. One for two, a single and a strikeout. Oh, all right. I mean, it's honestly astonishing the height that these pitches get and that they always end up right where he wants them. Breland using his third bat of this at bat. Bill does a 360 and Bill breaks off the fastball. Another one, yeah. that one. Oh, oh, just off the glove of Oberst. Yeah, Dan Oberst actually overshot that just a tad. Yeah, Ended amazing effort. Bouncing off the heel of his glove. The Bananas had a Bill Lee shift on with four guys in the outfield. Dane was the only man on the right side of the infield. And it'll be a flare single. And it looks like Mike Pavesis is here, ready to get jiggy with it. Have well, those legs moving. This is Bill Lee's nemesis. Mike Pavesis took him deep in Grayson Stadium last year's World Tour. Vava skies that one in the infield. Cox with the call and the catch, and two away. So Vava 
pinch, hits, pinch hits for Dalton Cornette, who was one for two with a run scored. The spaceman is locked in, and his nemesis is Reese Hampton right now. That honey badger looks like he's ready to go, but Bill Lee's got something up his sleeve waiting for him. That ball looks like it scorched third base coach Brandon Sherman, and now Dustin Baber's gonna go out and try and protect him. <laughs> Sherman told me he's not scared of nothing, so he will never move out of the way. <laughs> Actually, is uh, definitely a direct quote from him. That yes. one's chopped to second. Dalton Malden takes care of it. Great play, great inning, Bill. Welcome back, Spaceman. It's amazing to have you. He does what he does. He gets outs. Could have had a one, two, three frame. He ends up pitching out of the one out single. And we will head to the bottom of the sixth inning. Our game locked at one point apiece. And the fans going wild in the stands. West Palm, absolutely amazing crowd we got tonight. Electric, you know, living here in South Florida, these folks, these fans have been telling me that they have been waiting for this weekend since we were here last year. And you know what, they are bringing the energy the bananas are feeling the vibes, the animals are feeling the vibes, and this is an amazing crowd. Mr. Deerman, I have to cut you off because we have Jesse Cole, the owner of this here club, the man in the yellow tux. Jesse, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about the fireball. How about that, man? Never seen that on a baseball field before. I thought it looked good, supposed to be a strike, but uh, it was pretty impressive. I, and I just checked with Kyle, his hand is okay. And how about Bill Lee's return to the mound? That was a magnificent half inning, huh? What a special moment for Bill to come back after everything he went through. Really special, and uh, he's feeling great, and he, he wants to keep pitching. All right, real, real quick, Jesse, how about this magnificent full-capacity crowd in West Palm Beach? This is the most electric environment I've seen in my 15 years in baseball. It's unbelievable. We love this. I think this is great signs of what to, what to come on this tour. Thank you, Jesse Cole, as we get right back to the action and right on cue, DR Meadows lines that puppy into center and he has a leadoff double. He represents the inning winning run in scoring position. Doctor, oh my doctor. Way to start off the inning, buddy. Garrett Delano out for his sixth inning of work. Noah Bridges with, I think, a fan favorite walk-up song right now. Every single kid in the stadium is screaming, SpongeBob SquarePants. Yeah, he asked me in batting practice on Tuesday night if he thought he should really go with it, and it was an emphatic yes for me. Oh, yeah. Well, great call, Biko, because this crowd loves it. Got to throw a little cookie out there for the kids. The doctor one for two on the night now. And Noah Bridges could walk off the sixth. The Bananas took the lead in this ball game on the Dalton Malden walk off. Double back in the third inning, scoring Malachi Mitchell. Party Animal scored in the fourth. Two runs, won the inning two to nothing. And now that one fouled from the Bananas left fielder off the mask of Dalton Cornette. And a 3-1 offering here. This is where it gets dangerous, Deerman. Ball four, a sprint will certainly score a DR from certainly second. Certainly score a run and, you know, give us that lead we've been looking for. Oh, 
He's swinging. Bridges swings it into the back. It's oh, dunking it's into young. center, not fielded cleanly. The dock is coming home, and we got it. Point Bananas. It is a sixth inning walk-off single for Noah Bridges. Nanners retake the lead. They're up two points to one. And it looks like we've got about 15 <laughs> Rihannas on home plate. This has to match up with her Super Bowl performance, right? Wow. Let's go bananas. The rude boy dance done to perfection. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time. Uh, just a fantastic job the by the fellas Series. down there. The person, please rise. And we will toss to Shark to honor the men and women who have served our great country. Fans, please join the Bananas in honoring the men and women that serve this great nation as we salute our hometown heroes of the night. The Savannah Bananas, thank you so much for your service and commitment to our great country and for protecting our freedom. Where? Well, always a really cool moment in Banana Land, and two of the guys that you saw a couple shots ago yep. related well, to Mr. Electric. Yeah, man, that was my grandpa and actually my cousin's boyfriend, so I really appreciate all that they've done for this country. They are some of my heroes. Well, Mr. Deerman, I cannot thank you enough for joining us in the booth tonight. It is going to be incredibly exciting to see you back on thank the you, bump you. tomorrow night. And, I was uh, absolutely honored to be here, Biko. Yeah. I wouldn't trade this for the world. It's been my pleasure. It will not be the last time over the next 87 ball games that you'll be joining me in no, the broadcast. Sir, it will not. <laughs> Mr. Electric, thank you again, buddy. Thank you, Big Tiger. There goes Christian Deerman. He will be getting the ball to start tomorrow night as you take a look at Jared Donaldson, the splitter specialist, coming in to relieve Bill Lee, third pitcher of the night for the Nanners. Donnie was a Coastal Plain League champion with the Bananas this past summer, the ace of an incredible pitching staff. We are never short of surprises in Banana Land as Rick Ankeel takes right field for the Nanners. As Jesse said, a local legend. Rick out of Port St. Lucie, just south of us here. About an hour down the Sunshine State Coast. Talking to Tim Kirchin before the game, and he said, Rick Ann Keel, bar none, has the best left-handed outfield arm in Major League Baseball history. 43 years old, he was the second round pick for the Cardinals in the 1997 draft. As Donnie, the splitter specialist, starts Jake Skull off with a heater outside. Meet of the order, four, five, six for the party animals. Skull the first baseman, 0 for 2. Strikeout and an RBI ground out. Pushed what ended up being the winning run across in the fourth. And just like that, quick work made of Jake Skoll. After taking home the Pettit Cup for the Collegiate Bananas this past summer, Donnie pitched in the Summer Series as that ball is destroyed to left center. A no doubt bomb from Bryson Bloomer. Bloom goes the dynamite. And the party animals lead the seventh inning, one nothing.
Boy, he did not take it easy on his teammate from the 2022 summer. The collegiate banana turned professional party animal. Celebrates with some juice at home plate. I mentioned earlier he was the 2021 Bananas home run king. And look at that sweet swing. He knew it right off the bat. The flip and the trot around the bases for, for the great eight. First bomb of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour. How apropos, it belongs to the Boomer. Now a 2-1 count on Tanner Tinder Thomas. One for two with an RBI single and a ground out. He added the insurance run in the fourth inning. Didn't end up mattering. But always good for the old box score. That ball flicked into left. Base knock for the party animal's right fielder. Bridges bobbles it for a second. But he's gonna hold Tanner to his second single of the evening. Coming up to the mullet shake, Joe Lytle cuts and misses at the first offering. Quickly behind, no balls and two strikes. One for two with a pop out to first and a single. Here's the party animal's designated hitter. There's that patented splitter. Tanner can run. Six steals in the world tour across 14 games last spring. He got a great jump, cut and a miss. It's a strikeout but Mr. Tinder Thomas is gonna have the second swipe bag of the evening. The first one went to our home run man, Mr. Bryson Bloomer. Donnie collects his second K of the inning. Now Chase Acuff, one for two with the double and a strikeout. And that one back off the Bananas reliever. Donnie flips it to first. And that is that for the top of the seventh. But the damage is done. Bryson Bloomer with the bomb to left center. And the Bananas will need two runs to win the seventh inning, one run to tie it. Let's turn it back down to Josh Talevsky. Hey, thank you very much, Miko. Now we're gonna talk about 2022 World Tour Stats leaders some of the numbers tonight. Let's start with Bill Leroy. He led the Banana Ball World Tour last year with a 588 OVP. Now tonight, Bill has not gotten on base yet, but there's still a lot of games to go. Now how about Flash the Kid Malachi Mitchell? 11 stolen bases, one of which was a steal of first base. Now Malachi, no stolen bases, but he did score one of the Bananas walk-up runs so far in this game. How about Dan Oberst? A 440 batting average in the World Tour. How about a 500 batting average tonight? And now Michael Deeb, five walk-offs for the Bananas in the Summer or not in the Summer Series, in the World Tour. And as for tonight, Michael, no walk-offs, but we've gotten walk-offs from Noah Bridges and Dalton Malden. And of course, Cowboy Kyle, 22 Ks in the World Tour. How about five strikeouts in five innings? A really routine performance, as always, from Kyle. And of course, you had to love seeing that fireball come out of the hand of Mr. Lewis. Well, that's all I've got for Banana Ball World Tour stats. I'll toss it back up to you, Miko. We take a look at the scene here in the ballpark of the Palm Beaches. It's our own unique take on a seventh inning stretch. Yellow by Coldplay blasting. And the sold out crowd of 8,000 lights shining into the night here in West Palm Beach. Dylan Porter, the new man on the mound. 
replaces Garrett Delano, who goes six strong innings. Just two runs allowed. Both runs he gave up were walk-offs. That was in the third and sixth innings. So he lost two innings. And now the man out of the University of New Orleans will take over for Delano. Dylan Porter, the privateer. Started his collegiate career at Santa Barbara City College, then one year at Washington State before finishing up in New Orleans. Rick Ann Keel in the box. A quick 0-2 count because he took a strike, stepped out of the box as he was used to in his illustrious professional career. He can step out after a foul ball. He's not versed in banana ball rules, so I don't blame him at all after his 11 years in Major League Baseball for trying to get out of there. And just like that, Dylan Porter able to get him on the heater. He has some words for Vincent Chapman who made the right call. Uh, one of the more incredible cases in baseball history, a guy who came up as a pitcher. 1999 and 2000 was fantastic pitching for the Cardinals, then lost the feel of his pitches, went all the way back down to the lowest level of minor league baseball, and was back in the majors in 2007 as a terrific outfielder. Dalton Malden. Into the dish, one for one with the walk-off double back in the third. Dylan Porter with the pistol squat. His patented delivery as that one's fouled into the stands. Could be an out. Dalton with his hands on his head. It's caught on a bounce, but not on the fly. So Mr. Malden is safe. He blows a kiss to the crowd. Boy, he could see his future in that little duck snort. Heading into the right field side of the seats here in the ballpark of the Palm Beaches. The Bananas need one run to tie this inning, two runs to win it. And Dalton tied up. High stinky cheese from Dylan Porter, who has back-to-back -back strikeouts to start his world tour career. He was a banana in the summer series this past August into September. Here's your classic fastball slider, two pitch mix. Although you'll see a curve and a change up from time to time. It's, it's the heater and slider where he really makes his bacon. Ryan Cox in the 10 hole with a 1-1 count on him. The banana shortstop flew out to center back in the fourth. And the pride of Aliquippa, Pennsylvania fouls that one out of play. No chance for a fan to retire him. Porter one strike away from netting the second point of the night for the party animals. It's gonna be ground to third. Bloomer across the diamond in time. And the Party Animals win the seventh inning, one run to nothing, tie this game at two points apiece. With about 35 or 36 minutes to play, we are locked in a two point tie and only two innings to go. 30 minutes or two points, whichever comes first. Check that, 30 minutes or two innings. Looks like we've got a little twerk off on the field. Who better to MC it than Tanner Tinder Thomas?
and it's good that we've got a, bar a party animals and a bananas man both shaking what they've got. The key here is to get as many of the ping pong balls out of the tissue box that they have strapped just above their derrieres. Interesting technique there from the man in the party animals jersey. It seemed like he was helping his opponent. And I don't know if that was truly a fair comparison. The fans decided who won. And the man in the Bill Leroy bananas jersey got a healthy amount more cheers than our party animals jersey fan down there. And what an exciting debut we have on the mound now, DJ the Invader. He showed up to tryouts in the space helmet, told us his name was DJ, would not give us any more information about who he is or where he hails from. But he got on the mound, popped the radar gun above 90. He hit 93 miles an hour, had a really nice arsenal. And we said, shoot, we don't care what you've done in life up until now. You're a professional pitcher. We'll give you an opportunity, but he refuses to take off the helmet. He's got the bottom of the order. Jason Swan breaks his bat in half. And two pitches into his banana's career, DJ has an out. Swan now 0 for 3, a couple Ks in his first two trips to the dish. Dustin Baber in the 10 hole. Round outs to short and third so far tonight. All that I've gotten out of DJ is that he's a four seam and two seam mix. He's 94 to 95 in some bullpens after the tryout. Mixes in a slider, cutter, and changeup. He thinks he's got the best changeup in the world. Doesn't think big leaguers can hit it. I'll tell you what, Baber got a good barrel on that. But a really nice running snag by Noah Bridges in left. Celebrating like no, but I'll do it. I know. he just won the World Series, as he should. We appreciate big celebrations in Banana Land as Baber has a quick exit off the field. And to the top of the order we go, Breland Almodova holding down left field. His patented jump of the bat into the box and takes a fastball right down the chute for strike one. Two for three season debut for the Stylin Hawaiian. That one fouled. Could be caught by a fan. No, it can't because Dan Oberst is going to grab it. What a quick inning for DJ the Invader. Heck of a debut for the mysterious masked man. And the Nanners can take the lead in the bottom of the eighth inning with just one run. Shout going on here in Banana Land. Steve in the K Club chat said he really wants a DJ Q&A. So he could just repeatedly ask who he is. <laughs> Always the jokester, Mr. Kellogg. Boy, who does it better? Kyle or Manana Marty? Christian Deerman goes from the broadcast booth to the top of the Bananas dugout. Mr. Electric certainly should be considered in our dance judgment competition here as well. I mean, this is his dance, the slide. Jeffrey said, some say that DJ might have once hit home runs for both the party animals and the bananas, but all we know is it's the invader. 
You're spot on, Jeffrey. Brian hoping for a party animals hat, and uh, I gotta say, Brian, I think that's in the works. Not available to the public yet, but it'll be out there. Some fans joining in on the banana illusion of dance as well, both young and old. A little Gangnam style. Now, something to keep track of here tonight is with the debut of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour, we're also debuting a new award every night. It's the Showman of the Night, and we want folks in the comment section, both the YouTube and K Club comment section, to let us know who you think has shined the brightest. It's gotta be a combination of big plays on the field, celebration, boogieing, whoever has entertained and had a lasting impact on the outcome of the ball game. We will announce tonight's showman of the night right at the end of the ball game. Jamie wonders if DJ is Devin Williams. That's a good guess. When he said he has the best changeup in the world, that's a good hint. That one popped to the right side. Bermuda triangle, it's gonna dunk in for a hit. Eric Jones digging for second, head first slide. And he is in there safely. Base umpire Randy Voss. The pride of Waco, Texas. Met Vincent Chapman, our dancing home plate umpire this past summer. Guy who makes his bacon in the Sooner Conference, Great American, Lone Star Conference. Was thrilled to be invited to umpire some banana ball. The inning winning run in scoring position. Eric Jones replaced by Malachi Mitchell. Now Dan Obers could be the hero here in the eighth. And the bender is high. Dylan Porter out for a second inning of work wants a new weapon. Eric Jones now one for three on the evening. A little seeing eye double as Dan tries to check his swing. Thought he was getting a front door breaking ball. Dan is first baseman, comes up empty on the heater. Malachi taking off for third, throw from Cornette. In time! Heck of a chuck from DC3, the tag from Bryson Bloomer, and the inning winning run. Wiped off the base pads. Well, the potential inning winning run, that is. Dan Ober is certainly capable of doing the damage all on his own. The Largo, Florida native playing in his home state. Three year collegiate banana. And the returning world tour batting leader. Fouls that one out of the stadium. Dan hit six homers in his Pettit Cup Championship 2021 banana season, but comes up empty on the high cheese. Porter has his third strikeout. Out of the five outs he has earned, a little assist from his catcher, Dalton Cornette. Now Danny Hosley, designated hitter, also has the ability to win this inning with one swing, but this could be the end of the inning with a catch from a fan. No, it hits the ground. And Hosley has a second life. Danny 0 for 1 on the day. Hit by a pitch and is grounded out. And flails and misses. 
Dylan Porter, two excellent innings in relief. He does the job. Eight innings in the books. And we're still tied at two points as we head to the ninth inning. Remember, in the ninth inning, if it is the final inning, which it will be, every run counts as a point. So for the first eight inning, the first eight innings, rather, you can win an inning seven runs to nothing. You just get one point. But here in the ninth, every run is a point. So being able to put a crooked number up is oh so important. Of course, since our game is locked at two points apiece, heading to the ninth tonight, that rule truly doesn't have an effect on our game. Whoever wins the inning is going to win the game. If nobody comes out on top, then we will go to tiebreaker showdowns. There's no action in the party animals pen. So I would wager Dylan Porter, who's racked up 4Ks at two scoreless frames, will be the man back out there. Dakota McFadden takes over for DJ the Invader on the bump for the Bananas. DJ got a pop-up, ground out, and fly out. One, two, three, top of the eighth. Dakota didn't get to pitch in last year's World Tour, as you see. Nothing statistically. He was supposed to pitch, got injured in the final scrimmage. Still was able to swing the lumber. And ended up being the world tour leader in home runs. Two bombs across 12 games played. It is 2-3-4 here for the party animals. Dalton Cornett. High fly ball. That thing is so far out of here. I can't believe it. DC three, no doubt bomb. And the party animals lead the game three points to two. Every run in the ninth inning counts as a point. And it took one swing of the bat to give the party animals the lead here in the last inning of the night. Boy, Dalton drilled it. That was a monstrous blast. High arcing into the West Palm Beach night. It's his second hit of the ball game. And swinging first pitch, Reese Hampton skies that one in foul territory. Bill Leroy trying to make an acrobatic play, doesn't have a chance at it. Switch hitting center fielder. Peter catches the outside corner. DMAC fires outside. Pride of Rocky Mount, North Carolina. 
Now with the full count firing in, Hampton just flicks the bat head at it. And Noah Bridges will make the snag in left for out number one here in the top of the ninth. The first baseman, Jake Skoll. 0 for 3, couple Ks and an RBI ground out. And as Skoll steps into the left-handed batter's box, Rick Ann Keel hops on the mic. Rick, how you doing, buddy? Oh, fantastic, man. What a good time. So much fun. So fun to get out there and put out the uniform and be with, be with the guys. Is this your first Bananas game you've experienced as Jake Skoll interrupts me rudely with a shot to right center. DR can't make the acrobatic snag. Jake thinking about three, and he's going to have it standing up. The party animals bringing the barrels to the top of the ninth. They lead three to two, have a man 90 feet away from scoring. And now Bryson Bloomer, who had the moon shot to left center his last time, steps in. It is, it is my first time with Savannah's. Uh, in person, it's been great. My kids are here. I live here in Jupiter. So uh, this was the talk of the town, the buzz, you name it. Last time was a 2-2 pitch that he got, that he, that it hung for him. Oh, he's got a chance at home. Yeah, this is going to be a tough play. Bermuda triangle. Dan Obers can't make the catch. It looks like the entire Party Animals team has decided to coach third base, and they make the right decision sending home Skull. Now it's a 4-2 lead for the Party Animals, and we hope Dan's okay in shallow right. He's a little shaken up on the play. I knew I should have stayed in right field. <laughs> that was your ball right there. Uh, listen, you called it, man. It was the Bermuda Triangle there. There's nobody close. No play to be made on that one. Listen, I think that was the baseball gods given Skull one because I thought he was safe on the grounder to second his first time up. I agree. It's funny how karma comes back for you in this game. Ball will find you no matter what. So when I was hitting, they didn't tell me I couldn't step out. And, and then the umpire rung me up. I know, and I, I said it. <laughs> this hasn't been the rule for, you know, the seven years you were a hitter in Major League Baseball. And I tell you, it's it's a little different as Bill Leroy tries a back pick at first and it sails into right. So Bryson Bloomer. I like it. I just didn't know. I yes. mean I like I like the hurry up rules. Let's play, let's have fun, make it happen. Yeah, Bloomer now three for four on the day. No to, love from the umpire on that one. No, though. and and no grace period. No no mulligan or anything. Well, I would have back in the box ready to hit, too. I know, I know. No, I, I, I thought that he, he could have gave you that one there. Well, now I know who I'm not buying a beer after again. <laughs> that ball is scorched into right center, and on the run, DR can't make the snag. Normally sure-handed. Looked like that one was knuckling. It's going to be an E8, and everything's kind of falling apart here for the Nanners at the top of the ninth. Second error on the last three pitches. Tanner Thomas now two for four. You know, it's a little different than playing 13 years of professional baseball, but as Tanner Thomas takes off for second, throw all the way through, and back safely to third is Bloomer. So give Tanner a stolen base. Uh, I've had three at-bats in banana ball. And, you know, played baseball through high school, club ball in college, and I immediately stepped out of the box. The first banana ball at bat I had, even though I'd probably broadcast 25 plus banana ball games. It's just instinct, even it's, if you know what's happening. Absolutely. Look, that's just my normal routine. You get in there, listen, I haven't taken a live at bat in, I don't know. I mean, you could say however many years it's been yeah. with somebody throwing Since that Since 2013? Hard. Right. So, you know, the first pitch, the approach, I just wanted to see a ball, right? So, I'm, okay, good. Now I've seen one. Let me step out, got my <laughs> thoughts, dial in my sights here, figure out what I got to do. All of a sudden, it's strike two. And, and have you taken batting practice recently? Anything like that as Joe Lytle uh, strikes out, tries to lightsaber the throw from Leroy out of the air. But no, I haven't. Yeah. So like four weeks ago, I tore my right bicep and I got oh lucky gosh. because it tore from the top. Um, so I don't have to have it repaired or have surgical repair. So, um, but you know, just so much fun to get in there, get in the box, feel it live. Well, this is a very important batter, Chase Acuff with two ducks on the pond, two runs already home in the inning. This one could be out number three if a fan can make the play. They don't have an opportunity. It's out of the stadium. They cuff the shortstop, 
One for three on the night with a double. Now, if there's a pass ball at any point, can they run to first? Yes. Perfect. That one chopped just foul. Bloomer off third, Thomas off second. One two pitch coming. Dakota McFadden trying to strain two party animals in scoring position. Yeah, that one's going to be popped to right. Michael D back in where Rick Ann Keel just was. And D will put it away for out number three, but the damage is done. Solo shot from Dalton Cornett. And the RBI single from Bryson Bloomer. Make it a four to two game. Nanners will need two runs to send this thing to showdown tiebreakers. Three runs to walk the whole thing off. How about this environment tonight here, Rick? The crowd's been pretty electric, huh? Listen, it's absolutely incredible. As I mentioned earlier, the buzz of coming around this with you guys coming here was, a, you know, fantastic, I should say. They were talking about nothing else. Spring training starts here in a week, but I can tell you this. We do not sell out spring training games even close to what this is tonight. So much fun. You guys bring a great energy to the game, a fun aspect, and I think it's needed. Uh, especially for the kids to, to understand that this game is supposed to be fun and you don't have to be the best on the field to have fun. Yeah, I, I couldn't have said it any better myself. I mean, that's what it's all about. And uh, you should be celebrating. This is a child's game. We're, we're here to enjoy it. And, and the fans have been rowdy, not just from the first pitch, from the gates opening at 5.30 today as our roaming camera finds a bunch of kids, just like Rick said, I mean, just as a as a thought, so my team was here shagging balls with the guys at 2.30. Yes. Right? During BP. Right. They left there, had pizza, got back here at, I don't know, 4.30 or 5, and they were already two, 300 people deep in line to get back in and find a seat. It's 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 really fun. It's it's getting close to the old Yogi Berra-ism. Nobody goes there anymore because it's too crowded. We've got over 500,000 people who are going to get to watch Banana Ball live across this 87 game 33 city tour. And the wait list has eclipsed another 500,000 with just about 2,000 people joining every day. It's pretty, Amazing. It's pretty mind boggling. Yeah, it's awesome. As it should be, it's fun. I, I think you're bringing, you're, you're, you're doing exactly what the game needs, in my opinion. We'll see if the bananas can do what they need to send this thing to showdowns or win it outright here in the bottom of the ninth. They're going to have to do it against Brett Helton. Shirtless and as menacing as they come on the bump. Former Pittsburgh Pirates product. Fires that one into Bill Leroy. It's 4 5 6 for the Nanners. The catcher has lined into a double play and struck out. Jackson Olsen on deck. David Meadows in the hole. And a quick three ball, no strike count. We haven't seen a sprint tonight. Ball four means all seven fielders have to touch the ball before it's live. If Brett didn't get a strike there, it, we would be headed towards the first banana does, ball game in history he without a sprint. On, does he take this on purpose or swing? Oh, he's hacking. It happened too much. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great question because, you know, ball four isn't just one base, it's usually two. Right, could have been a double. But Bill liked what he saw, and now with two strikes, Brett's going to let the hair loose. And how about Bill Lee coming out dominating? It's, it's honestly mesmerizing to me watching those Leafuses arc so high in the air and come, bound in, come down in the zone as Bill gives that a ride. But Reese Hampton covers a lot of ground, and just about half, if not, no, I think the entire Party Animals team is now getting a good look. Besides Reese, and Baber at second base with his little leprechaun vest have all lost their shirts. It's a confident bunch. Jackson Olsen back up the middle and under the glove of Chase Acuff. Would have been a tough play. And with two runs needed, Jackson not trying anything crazy at first base. He's now one for three, couple strikeouts in his first two trips to the dish. He just needed to take his pants off. He might have been a step faster. <laughs> He's already got the jersey off. It's <laughs> a good point. It was all the wind resistance. 
Oh, and those pink pants pulling him back. Peter inside to the doctor, DR Meadows. One for two with a K and a single. And ahead, two balls, no strikes. Helton at a Colorado Springs on the bump, nails DR, and I've never seen anybody flop to the ground like that. We got ice. Second banana hit tonight, and DR will gritty his way to first base. That is very important. It puts the inning tying run at first, and the inning winning run in the box in the form of Noah Bridges. Known for his speed, but he's got sneaky pop. Nobody warming in the Party Animals bullpen. This is Brett Helton's game to win. Nasty Bender paints the outside corner. Brett's fastball is 93 to 94. As Bridges, high fly ball, deep to right center go, field. Go, go, go. It's one hop off the wall. One run scores. Here comes Noah Bridges. Here come the Bananas! Noah Bridges represents the game-winning run at second base. I told you he's got some surprising pop. Took it to the deepest part of the park. That was probably 400 plus off the bat. That's the high rent district. <laughs> That's a fact right there. And now Michael Deeb. Who else? Last year's World Tour walk-off king. As Josh Talevsky noted a few innings ago, five walk-offs in 14 games and hunting for it on the first pitch. He had four walk-offs in four consecutive at-bats. Early on last year in the tour. And behind, no balls at two strikes. Helton works in a cutter, change-up and curve to go with the low to mid-90s heater. Tries to go back to the well with the backdoor bender and just misses. Bridges has terrific speed at second. This ball could be caught by a fan, but it hits the ground first. How many outs have been caught by a fan tonight? We have any? None yet tonight. And you look at all the opportunities. Big swing and a miss. Deep fooled on the changeup. And Helton one out away from escaping and sending this thing to showdowns. Now how does the showdown rules work? That's a great question, Rick. It's basically baseball's equivalent to a penalty shootout. Just the pitcher on the mound, one man in the infield, and the catcher. The hitter has to get an inside the park home run or else he doesn't earn a point. As Dalton Molden, the songbird of our generation, takes that heater inside. There's a high fly ball, deep to center field. Hampton after it. He's not going to get there. Noah Bridges scores. Dalton Molden, the hero. His second walk off of the night. The Nanners win 5 4. To the tree. A three-run bottom of the ninth inning. Here's Jesse Cole.
what a scene here in the ballpark of the Palm Beaches. A fantastic game that was going at a torrid pace. We had nearly 25 minutes to complete the ninth inning. It was a 2-2 tie. The party animals looked like they could not be stopped in the top half. They pushed two runs across, but they strand runners in scoring position. And then the bananas erupt for three in the bottom half. The two-run game-tying double from that man right there, Noah Bridges. And then the death blow from the songbird of our generation, Dalton Malden, who goes two for three with two doubles, both of them walk-offs. Dalton walked off the third inning with an RBI double down the right field line. And then the blast to center field to seal it. Cannot thank you all enough for tuning in to the opening night of the 2023 Banana Ball World Tour as the fans exit out of here as quick as they can so they can join the party on the plaza outside the gate. 